Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining February's Open Alex webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about affiliation, curation, and institutional profiles. And this is coming hot off the release of the Open Leiden rankings just a week or two ago now. Uh, we've had a lot of questions and, and interest in our affiliation matching, and so we wanted to do a whole webinar on it. Um, for those of you who, who are participating now, please feel free to put questions in the chat. My colleague Jason Portnoy is going to try and answer them live, but afterwards we will stop the recording and have live Q&A for the remainder of the time. Quick agenda for today's uh, webinar. A qu um, some quick information on the open line rankings that CWTS launched recently, but really we're going to talk more on affiliation metadata and institutional matching in open Alex. And what are some of the things that you can do or institutions can do to further improve that affiliation matching? I'll end with a couple of new feature announcements because I know people like to know those and what we're working on now, and then we'll go into the Q&A. I don't want to say too much about the Leiden rankings because they're doing some really great um, webinars and things as well. But I did want to point out that this year and just a couple of weeks ago, they launched the first version of an open line rankings based entirely off open data. And much of the open data source was was open Alex. So there's two links here that I think are really helpful for anyone who wants to look into that more open.lidenranking.com and then lidenmatrix.nl where you can explore the rankings in more detail, but then you can also learn about the methodology. They've written some really great blog posts on this new Leiden rankings that are open, how they used our data, some quality of assessment and things like that. So please do check that out. They've got some great events coming up as well. But the only other thing I do wanna say uh, before diving in, because it gives really good context is that the Leiden rankings now using open data creates a, a different setting um, from, from the traditional proprietary data they've been using. And you can see this Venn diagram, and I've taken all three of these um, from one of their blogs, so please feel free to go look at those and read about them in more detail. Um, but this Venn diagram at the bottom shows that um, the open Leiden ranking has quite a bit more publications in it than the uh, traditional Leiden ranking, but there is a lot of overlap. So a lot of the same publications, some that are only in the closed and some that are only in the open. So a lot of alignment here, but definitely some differences. And then these two graphs on the right are really important for affiliation matching because they basically took these two scenarios, the open Leiden rankings and the closed Leiden rankings and asked, what percent of universities have a certain percent of documents missing in one versus the other? And you can see, uh, read more detail on their, on their blog about why some of these differences do exist. But I did want to point out that in these different um, versions, using the open versus the closed data, you do see slightly different um, information. And one of the things I really appreciated about their blog post is that they ended with um, practical tips for room for improvement. And these are slightly paraphrased from their blog post, but I think they're really important to focus on. And I'm going to use these as a guide for the remainder of the talk. But first, they said to us, Open Alex, you can improve metadata completeness and the ability of our algorithm to match affiliation metadata to institutions. So that's something that we're taking on and have been continued working with them um, in the development of this and are continuing afterwards. They've said, research organizations, please, you can report errors both to them and to us. We communicate quite a bit, but this is something that, that you can do. Publishers can contribute ROAR IDs when depositing to Crossref. So one of the big challenges here is that we get affiliation strings, and I'll talk about this in a moment, in a variety of shapes and forms, and then we have to match them to actual ROAR IDs. I was just on the ROAR community call last week, and I was really excited to hear from Springer Nature that they are moving in this direction and will be um, depositing ROAR IDs when they're depositing records to Crossref. And the benefit there for everyone is that um, we don't have to guess and make algorithms to, to match these to affiliation strings to ROAR IDs. They'll be there in the original record. So very excited about that and hoping that other publishers jump on as well. Um, and then two additional ones. So bibliometric groups like CWTS, but there's groups all around the world, individual researchers, consulting firms who are doing analyses at a very large scale in Open Alex. And anything you can do to monitor and report issues to us will benefit everyone. And then finally, everyone can collaborate with Roar to improve their registry. And I will just quickly say that working with Roar has been really fantastic. They're responsive, um, much more so than I was expecting an organization could be. And they're a lean team, but they do a really incredible work. And anything you do to improve your metadata records in Roar directly benefits what happens in OpenAlex. 
So I did want to uh, make sure to say that. But for the rest of the talk, I'm just going to focus on, on sort of these three. So what Open Alex is doing, what research organizations can do, and a reminder that everyone can work collaboratively with Roar to improve that registry. I mentioned earlier that um, there are some documents that aren't in the traditional rankings and vice versa. I did want to share uh, a link here at the bottom to a new preprint that just came out a couple of days ago that does a large scale comparison comparing many things in Open Alex. I definitely recommend you go look at this uh, work. But from this Venn diagram, I wanted to say Open Alex does have quite a bit more works than Web of Science and Scopus. And, and we knew that going into it. One of the challenges is that some of those works don't have the same quality of metadata. Um, and, and some of these are field-based and some of these are work type-based. There's lots of reasons for that. In the Leiden rankings, they restricted the Open Alex database to only a set that had um, metadata quality that worked for them. But I do wanna say, you know, some of this is, is features of the work itself. So when I looked today at the, the percent of works that were missing institution data in, in Open Alex, it was 41% of them are in social science and humanities whereas 30% of our works totally are in social science humanities. So there is a disproportionate representation of, of that lack of metadata, but we wanna make sure we're bringing all of this metadata and all of these records into Open Alex. And then over time, we're gonna do everything we can to continue to refine that. But those, there are sometimes different standards. But the reason I bring this up is to say for all of the works that we have indexed, and I've shown this slide before in previous webinars, what we're doing is pulling information on those records to try and match with whatever information is there to sources of where it's being published, to concepts or topics or concepts, um, pub which publishers they are, which institutions, the works, the funders, the authors. And this is not necessarily an easy exercise. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about what this means for affiliation matching. So to date, some of the affiliation curation work we've been doing as Leiden rankings were, as CWTS was switching to considering a Leiden um, open ranking, they started analyzing our data in a way that it hadn't previously been analyzed and exposing a lot of room for improvement in the data set. We've been working very closely over the last year on making a lot of these improvements. And one of those improvements was getting more affiliation metadata, but another one was enhancing our disambiguation model and matching with RAR IDs. So really a lot of work has already gone into that. But we didn't stop there. Um, one of the things we recently did, and it started from one of these webinars maybe six months or so ago, we collaborated with 14 universities around the world to explore what enhanced affiliation curation could look like beyond what we had already done. And I'm just going to walk you through sort of how that went and some of the things we learned from it. So I mentioned earlier that we extract these affiliation strings and then we're trying to match it to an institution. These come in all shapes and sizes, and I notice there's a lot of librarians and technical librarians on this call, so um, I know they'll be very familiar with these, but these can look like all sorts of things. And really, these three that I picked are pretty easy examples of, of matching. There are some challenges here, like this one in the middle, for instance, is the wrong city uh, for, the, for the university. Maybe the faculty member lived there and they put that, but uh, things like that happen, but we have to try and match it to a RAR ID. So the challenge here is that sometimes metadata is wrong. No algorithm is perfect, but people can help curate. And the way that we thought about this was what could potentially be causing the issues and then how can we identify those and resolve them? So if you imagine two institutions at the top, institution A and institution B, and I've color coded their works to be sort of the same color as the institutions for to illustrate this. But over here on the bottom, you can imagine if we've drawn a box around these six works, five of them should have been at that institution and one of them was wrong. So that we would say is a precision error. We matched it, but it was imprecisely matched. It was wrongly matched. And then there's institution B where you can see we have the same issue, but because this blue one uh, for institution B has been mapped to institution B, it should have been mapped at institution A. It's missing from institution A. That's also a recall error. But then there's also recall errors where we haven't attributed to anything and, and we need it to go to that institution. So we spent a lot of time thinking about um, precision and recall, but also around incorrect metadata. And the first thing I want to say is institutional metadata errors do happen um, and sometimes they're very easy to resolve and can have a really big impact. So this is an example for the institution I showed, University of British Columbia. 
of what their ROAR record looks like. If you haven't looked at your ROAR record before, I definitely encourage going to ROAR.org and looking up your institution. And you just want to look, there's, there's several things, and we can talk more about it if you go down this route. But essentially, is the metadata accurate? Are there inaccuracies? Like you, maybe you've changed your name and there's an alternate name you need to add. Do not worry about adding all of your departments or faculties as an institution. That will not help. But if there are some institutes that use a separate name and faculty members publish with that affiliation, but not the major university, adding that sort of parent-child affiliation relationship will help. So there's little things like that that you can do. And I'll just say, um, you don't have to tell us. You can just at the bottom of the ROAR page, you'll see there's submit a curation request. You can submit it directly to them. Uh, but also we're, we're happy to help at any point sort of see how much of an issue that is for your particular institution in our data set before you do this type of thing. So the, the next big thing was identifying and resolving precision errors. And these are the steps that we took, but anyone can do this. So a couple things that you can do very easily is go look at the, the documents that have been mapped to your institution. Are there publication dates that seem off? So if a university is somewhat uh, young, like some of them are only 50 years old, and there's 200 year old papers, that's a great way of finding some, some precision errors and papers that shouldn't have been mapped that are. Sometimes there's other reasons for that, but uh, that's, that's one way to start looking. For institutions that publish on every topic, the second one doesn't really help. But if you're a focused university that only works on a few topics, like let's say you're um, a nursing institute and there's a whole bunch of publications that are totally unrelated to that, that's a great way of identifying problems. But what we did was we spot checked a random sample, both of DOIs that we had mapped to institutions, but also the affiliation strings that we mapped. And we looked at whether or not those uh, were correct. And these did much better than we expected. For the universities that we looked at, it was between 98 and 100%. So the precision was really great. And we were very happy with that. Um, but there were some errors that we found. And when you find errors like that, you can just send us the work IDs or the DOIs that have been wrongly attributed to your institution. And I'll put the, the email address in the chat of where you can send that to. Um, but the other thing you can do is if you are looking at the raw affiliation strings and you find the strings that shouldn't be matched, you can let us know about those as well. But that takes a little bit more data digging. The next part, though, was to look at recall. And this had a lot of surprises for us and why it was really great that we did this exercise and very appreciative of the universities that collaborated with us on this. So the best way to do recall is to have some sort of gold set from an institution where they say, here's a list of the documents we know are ours. We know these should be matched. And then we can compare to what we have in OpenAlex and say, how many of those were in there? And that's an important thing to know. But then the ones that weren't in there, why? And this, when we did this exercise you know, six months or so ago, we did find that this number was lower than we expected. The average was 85% on recall. I mentioned precision was 98 to 100, so there was something happening here that we needed to improve. But it wasn't like we thought where it was going to be um, the algorithms not appropriately matching. We actually found some situations where we were no longer getting affiliation strings in the way that we needed to. So through that, we identified three systematic errors in, in our way of collecting data. And we've had somebody working full time on that since. And there's a launch um, coming in the next week or two that is going to improve that even more. So we're really excited about that. Um, but now that we've sort of fixed those problems on our end, if you find uh, institutions that aren't, or you find papers that aren't getting mapped that should, you can do the same thing. You can send us a list of DOIs, or you can send us the incorrect affiliation strings. Now, there's pros and cons to both. Um, the DOIs are much easier, and if you send us a list of DOIs, we can go through it and try and understand, are there certain affiliations that aren't mapped? And, and often we find that there's maybe an institute that needs to be mapped in ROAR, and so part of that feedback can be to, to curate that ROAR document, um, documentation. If you're brand new to all of this and you don't know how to get a gold set, um, we gave very vague instructions to the institutions intentionally to see sort of the different approaches they would take. Some institutions had a list of 100 to 120 publications that they had been curating for some other set that they gave us. And some institutions gave us all of the DOIs in their repository, so many tens of thousands of DOIs. And both of those you can work with. I will say, if you want to start exploring that, that latter part, um, my recommendation is to go on to openalex.org, 
You can find your institution. I chose here as an example, my alma mater, University of South Florida. You can see we've got 96,000 works attributed to them. You can export up to 100,000 works uh, at a time through the user interface. And one of the columns is DOI. So if you have a large gold set from like an institutional repository or something else that you've been maintaining, you can see which ones of those are already in OpenAlex and which ones aren't. And then from that subset of the ones that aren't attributed to you in OpenAlex, we can figure out why. And I will say there wasn't a single example of there being a DOI that wasn't in OpenAlex. So every DOI that people sent us was in it. It was just an, attribu an attribution challenge. And the final thing I'll say about uh, other things you can do to improve recall, because I know there are some technical librarians on the call, is you can create a custom search query strategy to help identify things that are missing, even without a gold set. So on the user interface, you can't search the raw affiliation string data. There's not a big demand for that use case, but there are some really great uses, and you can do it in the, the um, APIs. So this is an example of an API search. You can see api.openalex.org backslash forward slash works. The filter here I've applied is within the raw affiliation string search, look for Cape Breton University. So these are, you could this is where you can get creative in your search strategy and figure out what words you want to search. Um, and then I've said um, where authorships do not equal, so the exclamation mark is do not equal the institution ID for Cape Breton University. So basically, I'm saying, give me all the publications where in the raw affiliation string, we see Cape Breton University, but it's not currently mapped to the institution. In this particular example, there were only four, which was really satisfying to see. But just as an example, I posted one here, Cape Breton University, Sydney, uh, New South Wales, Australia. Sydney, uh, Cape Breton University is actually in Sydney, Canada. Um, and it's Nova Scotia, actually, so NS, not NSW. But because the metadata had NSW, it tagged it to Australia, the Sydney there. Um, and it had the wrong geographic metadata. So it wasn't, our algorithm wasn't matching it. But we were able to sort of make that change. So that's an example of how you can get really specific in trying to find these. And for most people, you won't need to do this. Um, our goal is to have the highest recall and precision we can have possible for all institutions around the world without any further sort of manual creation. But we also know that many institutions want to be able to refine it even further. And anything you do uh, to identify those errors and give us that on the ground information, we can use to make Open Alex better for everyone in the world. So we are very keen to collaborate with you on that. And I mentioned uh, in the title of this, this webinar that we we're gonna talk about institutional profiles. What I mean by that is that in the last version of the user interface that we launched, we have new what we're calling profiles for a lot of these entities. So for an institution profile now, I, I brought up University of South Florida earlier. If you search University of South Florida and then click on that filter, you can see you get the institution ID number. But if you click this I button at the top right, it will actually take you to a link that has information on the institution. And so you can see here, this is an example of the, the link that you'll get when you click that. So if you're using the user interface, you probably often see openalex.org forward slash works. And that's when it's doing work searches, so publication searches. This is now institutions. We're doing the same thing with authors and sources. Um, right now, it's pretty bare bones because we've just built this, this idea. But we're going to be adding affiliation hierarchies onto this page so that you can check yours. Uh, and see whether or not it's in sync with Roar. And we do have a link to, to your Roar record on there as well. Um, and we're also gonna be adding the top topics that your institution is contributing to. So things like that. But we wanna hear from you, what are some other features you'd like to see when you look at an institutional profile? Um, because as we develop this out, it's really feedback from users that we're gonna use to do that. And the last piece I'll say I put coming later here is we are working on the ability for institutions and probably librarians at their institutions to claim their institutional profile and do some curation work in OpenAlex. Our priority right now for that is going to be on author IDs um, and author profiles. So we're working on that at the moment, but coming later, you should be able to do that same type of thing for an institution. So that's the last piece I wanted to say about affiliation matching and institution profiles. I did want to add a couple of, of new developments that we've got going on before the Q&A to make sure everyone knows these are coming. But 
The CWTS topic classifications are now available in the API and they will very soon be available in the user interface. Uh, we had a, an office hours on this last week, but I did want to say that um, the topics are slightly different. So the CWTS topic classifications were, and you can learn about this on the, the Leiden blogs as well, but based on citation patterns of papers, which papers are citing which and which are being cited by which to come up with these sort of clusters of papers. And then those were topics. And these are really great because they, regardless of how we think about the world of science um, and, and research, these are actually how papers are citing one another. But that could only happen with a third of the, the publication data in OpenAlex, and it can't be applied to things necessarily that don't yet have any citations. So we came up with an algorithmic approach of going through OpenAlex data to classify them against the same topic structure. So it is slightly different, but uses the same topic taxonomy. And those are now live in the API as of yesterday. Um, we've already got some feedback from people who are starting to play around with it. So we hope that this everyone will be excited about that. Um, we are seeing this as a bit of an upgrade from the Microsoft Academic Graph concepts. There were some ways that the concepts were working that worked really well for folks in some ways that really weren't working to meet people's needs. And we see this as an improvement on a lot of those. So really excited about that. Another big project we've got at the moment is we're working on ingesting data site. So this is going to substantially increase the, the works in OpenAlex, but also um, the types of works that are in OpenAlex. And we've been getting a lot of interest in that, so stay tuned, coming soon. We have several initiatives on getting more data for affiliation and references. These are two of the things people have, have told us they want to see more of in OpenAlex. And so we've got a few things going on to, to increase those that we'll be launching soon. And we also have heard very recently that people want to be able to save searches and set up search alerts in the user interface. And that's going to be launching, uh, I believe, next week, but maybe within the next two weeks on the user interface, you'll be able to see the first versions of that. So we're really excited about that as well. And just this last piece, we are working next on author disambiguation. We spent a lot of time focusing on affiliation disambiguation, partly because of the, the CWTS open line rankings, but also partly because that's the most prominent um, entity for most research intelligence use cases. But now we want to turn our attention to author disambiguation as well. People who are watching that space will know that we've made a few changes over the last six months, um, but we're, we're looking for, for more of that coming up as well. So thanks again. I'm going to stop the recording in a moment so we can open it up for Q&A, but I did want to say if you have questions and feedback or suggestions, please reach out no matter what what you're reaching out about, you can go to openalex.org forward slash feedback and, um, and, and send us that feedback. And we really look forward to hearing from you because that's the information we're using to help develop OpenAlex for, for everyone in the world. So thanks again. And um, thanks for those who are watching this after the fact. <laughs>